Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling at Zimbibo. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at Zim Beads, which is new in Zim 10.7.0. How exciting! So let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. We will press on Examples here, and then there it is, Beads. Zim Beads places objects around squiggle and blob paths. Ooh, how exciting. So these are beads, and so are the beads around there as well. These are beads. They're placed on a custom path. The Batman path. And we're animating them. Here are beads placed around a spiral and we can shift click these and remove the points and have a see what it looks like when there's less points. Nice, huh? Happy beads? <laughs> Confused beads? Oh! <laughs> Happy beads. <laughs> happy beads. Here are my happy beads. I'm so happy I'm sad. <laughs> yeah, we can add points in there. <laughs> it's a mustachio. -yo. Mustachio. <laughs> I tried to say mustachio. I'm silly. All right. So there are beads placed around a rectangular path. And then we're animating those with a sequence. Isn't that beautiful? Good. And then here are beads on a cloud. Ah. And we can change those up if we want. Do, 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 do. Now we have the old camel cloud. <laughs> yes, very nice. What kind of cloud is that? Well, that's, a, that's the official camel cloud. And then we also had this one where we were showing that as we change a blob or a squiggle, it works like this too, that we can get the bounds of that now. Here, showed that in the last bubbling. All right, super duper. Let's go in and see some code uh, about how we can do that. Drop this down. How we can do the Zim beads, the planet one. We'll go through that a little bit, shall we? We're bringing in CreateJS one. Two, three, <laughs> and Zim ten seven zero. There, I've always hated saying ten point seven point zero. There, ten seven zero. Yeah, kind of like that. Uh, if we scroll on down, we have a bunch of assets for the planets, and we use the Zim asset list. So the Zim asset list. Oh, desktop review. Somebody told me I should learn how to do my tab shift tab. Hold on, this. No, I just made tabs. What was it? Control tab? Yeah. Oh, I'm such a, such a hacker. Look at me go. And then I can control tab again. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Okay. So uh, we're learning things. <laughs> what's, what's bubbling? <laughs> I've never done that. I've always gone down to the bar. I'm so slow at what I do. Huh? Um, anyway, here we are. Where were we? <laughs> what the heck were we doing here? All uh, right, I was going to show you under the code section here. If we scroll on down in code, here are the tools. There's the, the asset list is a tool that you can browse a directory, select a bunch of files, select them all, and then Zim, uh, you'll submit that, or, and Zim will make this stuff for you, so you don't have to make all that. Nice, huh? Now, we've kept the planets separate from the rest of the assets, although we are concatenating the planets to the assets, uh, the rest of them anyway, and passing them in here, assets. We kept them separate because we're going to build the planets from those. Now, well, that's nothing new, obviously. This is straight JavaScript stuff that's going on there. We pass in a progress bar as well, not just a waiter, because there's a fair bit of assets here. We're going to show a bar showing you know, how long that takes to, to come in. We come on down, there's our pane. We had to put a pane in there. The pane is a pane. We had to put a pane in there because until we interact with the app, uh, we can't play sound. It sucks. Who made that up? Thanks, Chrome. Thanks, mobile. <laughs> Treating everybody like babies on the internet. Let them just turn down their volume if they don't want to hear the sound anyway. But we as content developers now have to 
uh, put a put a you know something a button saying, "Hey, do you want to hear the sound?" <laughs> it <was> like, <laughs> oh, for CD-ROMs. <laughs> Let's go back to CD-ROMs. <laughs> we didn't have to do that when we had CD-ROMs. Anyway, enough of a rant. We once we press or once we close that pane we're going to call the init here and here's where we're creating the planets tell you what let's not spend too much time going through all of the details you're welcome to come here and take a look but one detail i would like to mention is a thank you for the planets they're wonderful we've got them from the game dev market so you can check out the artist there um they're like only 10 bucks for those planets that's super and we also brought in uh, a sprite sheet that or a sprite that is the the glowing ring there and we've referenced that in here too so you're welcome to go out and grab some assets like that here is the new beads yay so this is what we're supposed to be concentrating on our our new beads here that's what's bubbling and we're passing in the array of planets what this did is convert a string to an array of planet assets so we're passing in a series of those we could just pass, pass in the array, then we would get them randomized around the beads. This is much like Zim Tile. If you've worked with Zim Tile, you can specify a series of things to tile, and then it will tile them in order. If you specify the square brackets, it will randomly pick from those and might even repeat them. So uh, same, same here, which is kind of neat. And that's all using Zim V or the Zim Pick value to be able to do that dynamic parameters uh, it's like that's zim all right letting you do dynamic parameters like that it may be considered functional programming in other worlds i'm not sure we can pass in a function there and then it will run that function each time it wants to make a bead visible false we're not seeing the path here's what the path looks like the path is actually a default blob because we haven't passed in any path let's uh, view this in a browser open in browser and there's what the path looks like turn off the sound. see there we go that's all i have to do is just turn off the sound there if i don't want sound no big deal um then we could pass in a custom path by saying path colon and a new blob for, uh, is, is what the default is, but we could pass in a square blob. Do you want to see that? That would be points. You can pass in any custom points here, but if you pass in the word rectangle, I think it will probably make a rectangle path and look really bad, but uh, here we go. There. So the blob is actually a rectangle and these things are following the rectangle. Oh my goodness. Uh, obviously you could well you could turn it so that there's no color to the blob that it is actually a uh, border color of blue or something that would that would make it border color you want to see that <laughs> border color colon blue now if you only pass in a border color to a blob it assumes you really only wanted that border color so uh, and not the rest of the color so there it is uh, looking like that all right, <laughs> weird, uh, or any custom path in there, but we are not going to do that. But um, and why don't we turn the visible false? Uh, these percents. Why are we doing the percents? How about we pause the animation and just have a talk about why we're doing that? So we're going to pause the animate of the planets. That's pausing the animate of the ID planets, and we refresh here. There they are. So. What we're looking at here are the planets around the path, and they look good. But it, it looks good because this is small, this space, and this is a big space, and they're also scaled bigger. So the scaling is actually coming from uh, down below. We'll show you that in a bit. But if we didn't have the... Oh, that was down below. <laughs> if we didn't have the percents in here like that, then here's what it would look like. Now they're evenly spaced around there. So the spacing between these are all even, but you can see that this looks wrong. Now it looks like they're too close together here and they're too far apart in the distance. So we had to custom customize the percents. We could get the percents right here by asking for, uh, change, let's copy that. 
this is planet beats apologies so um, if we ask for the planet beats dot percents it would give us 0 10 let's bring these back so we can see them better it would give us 0 10 20 30 40 50 60 and all we've done is modified that a little bit so that the things at the back are closer together and the things at the front are farther apart now as it says here there might be an equation that would do that we spent five ten minutes uh, just eyeballing it. The problem is an equation might work for that circle, it might work for a line going straight up or straight across, but as soon as you get blobs that are coming back on each other, all of a sudden you, if we used a formula based on height on the screen, we'd be going the wrong way, or based on the left right of the screen. So it, it really, I don't think it's, it's unformalizable. Yeah, that's, it's, it's unformalizable. Uh, so we just eyeballed it. But that's neat that you can pass in custom percents if you want. So by default, you can pass in a count here. Uh, the count will say how many things. By default, it will just distribute them around the path, uh, space them around the, the path at that count, or based on the count. And then you can adjust it. And this is the same way that we did letters on path and uh, a few other things in the past as well. Okay, so that's pretty good, and there's more parameters for beads as well, so you're welcome to look at the docs to see the different things that we can do there. And some of those parameters will affect the, the path, like whether we want to show controls or make it interactive, and some of them will affect the beads, like the angle. We could change the angle of the beads. By default, the, the beads sort of press out on the normal from the path that's perpendicular to the path but like I said you can change that up too. We're squashing the path so that it's not a circle. If we didn't squash the path this is what it would look like. Not terribly good. So this is a squashed circle so as in, oh actually we stretched it out on the side and uh, here's what it would look like if we didn't do that. More of a straight circle. There's the scaling. Let's go take a look at how we did that. That's in the animation part here. So this was new Zim Neo, Zim 9, back in Zim 9, the extra things we can do as we animate. So we are setting a zoom. If we don't set a zoom, ooh, it's going to be bad because the beads are quite big and we've scaled the whole of the beads up. So uh, those beads are going to get really, really big. Um, and bad looking, but they, they would all be the same size. And by setting, this is sort of saying make it small in the background. Well, I guess what we could do, yeah, sorry for the waffling here, instead of a bunch of planets, let's make a new circle here. And uh, we'll set that to be smaller, 10 by red, <laughs> 10 by red. So now we're going to be doing a bunch of circles and we can check out this Oops, we can check out the scaling stuff. So we refresh here, what have we got? We have, boop, yeah, some small circles. They're, they're quite small now, but if we remove the scaling, boop, boop, like that, then we get this sort of thing where they're even, well, they're not evenly spaced right now because we have the percentage, but now they're all the same size. So if we remove the percentages, they'll be evenly spaced. Bump, bump, like that. Boom. Now they're evenly spaced. And the speed as well. Um, the speed can also be an array. This, this can be an array. We can just say zoom true. And zoom true would have default array of, I don't know, 0 to 2 or something like that. Maybe 0 to 10. Let's see what it looks like. So there's the default scaling, zero at the top, maybe twice as big at the bottom or something like that. Or maybe it's just one at the bottom. Because they, they, I don't know, I can't remember. All right, so this is all Zim Neo stuff. So have a look back in Zim Neo. It talks, talks about that as well. So you can put trues in for these things, or you can customize them, or you can even customize them more. You can also specify layers. So this is how much they fade if they don't fade. Let's have a look at what the planets would look like. So I'm going to undo this and bring back the planets. There's the planets. We will still squash. Good, so that's still squashing. And let's just comment out the fade and see the slight difference there. So we refresh here. 
there's the planets, and those are still bright at the back. Where's the custom fade here? Like so. Boop. Is there not as bright at the back, and they're brighter at the front? Isn't that nice? So, wow, neat. This works really well with beads. That's uh, super duper. And now we're not going to pause. Um, we don't need the ID anymore, although it doesn't do any harm to keep that there. Here are the inner beads right here. We, uh, oh, that's the sprite sheet. So there's the sprite sheet. Thank you here for the sprite sheet maker. The ring timeout logo. There's the logo on the inside. We're animating that in. And then we're, once that animation finishes going through the thing, here we are making a ring, which are beads. And there we are passing in a blob that's actually more of a straight circle. So we didn't bother, for some reason, we didn't bother passing in a real circle to the original blob. The original blob's not too bad. It just has handles that are at 100, 100, or something like that. Whereas you need to be, oh, I don't know, 0 0.707 the radius or something to actually get handles that would make a proper circle. So when we figured that out, we, we made it so that you could pass in points in the shape of a circle, triangle, or, or, or rectangle angle if you so desire or of course any custom custom points like in the case of Batman to get custom points you would go to the Zim Neo example go to the path or what's called um, what's called pizzazz 4 pizzazz 4 you can find that under the under the code sections under libraries pizzazz 4 and you can find a bunch of custom paths there you can even send us custom paths and we'll post them there for you all right, so we are making that one interactive. We're putting the object on in a circle. We're passing another series of dynamic colors into that. Again, Zim V value or Zim pick, and that's custom. That's you know custom to Zim, I guess you could say. There's the no mouse. No mouse is new in Zim 10.7.0 to make sure that. All of these little, the beads, the circles, uh, we're, we're not interacting with them, so ignore any mouse movements on them. Uh, I'm not totally sure how much that does, but uh, doesn't do any harm, might help. And then we're animating those, ring timeout animating. What about this series, um, or sequence, sorry, the sequence animation. So if we go back up to the planets, how it works is the, the beads, will oh yeah 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 let's look at where we're animating on the beads and this is the last thing we'll do and it's turned into a bit of an explore oh it's a zim explore but uh, anyway hopefully you're still with us hello out there when we make beads the as you as you saw when we turned the visibility to true um, the beads include boop, the beads include the beads and the path. So if we're wanting to animate something in a, a sequence, we want a container that only has the beads. We don't want to have the path in there as well. So we cannot animate in a sequence or should not animate on a sequence on the beads object itself. If you want to animate the whole beads object like we did here, we twirled that, we maybe, yeah, we twirled it. That would just be animating the whole beads object. But in this case, we're animating in a sequence along a path that we would want to animate the beads only. So what we did is the beads object has a beads property. And that beads property right here, uh, that's the path, sorry. There's a path property as well, but the beads property is a container of only the beads. The path is only the path. So when we animate in a sequence, we're going to want to animate on the beads property. It's quite important. Now what we've done though, which is handy, is automatically given you a sequence. So this, whenever you animate on the beads themselves, you're going to get a sequence. It will animate each bead individually with a sequence of zero. You could, if you wanted to, have a sequence of whatever you want. And that's what we did with that one example in the rectangle, the skewed rectangle where the beads came out. That was animating with a sequence. As a matter of fact, we can see that anyway. Sequence colon 100 would wait 
100 for the, the planets to go. If we say one second, it would be kind of ridiculous. All these planets would bump into each other and stuff like that. Um, so anyway, by default, it, it's a sequence of zero there. And if we pop on out here, we can look at beads five, was it? No, that's the clouds, beads four. Yeah, beads four is the, the with the sequence. So if we come on down, here's beads four, there's the custom path, here's the beads, here's the beads.animate. So just watch that. You can't chain on the animate onto new beads because that's the overall object, including the path. We have to separate, come on out and chain on to the beads property of our, of our beads box is the beads in this case. And there is the sequence right there, a nice fast sequence. If we didn't have 40, if we commented that out, all the beads would go all at once. Okay. Alrighty. So I think that is good. Uh, this has been a What's Bubbling at Zim where we were taking a look at the Zim beads. Uh, beautiful. So I can't wait to see what you guys make with beads. Why don't you come on in to zimjs.com slash slack and let us know. Okay, show us some examples. Uh, zimjs.com slash slack. Don't be shy. Come on in. Work with work with beads. That's, uh, that's really cool. And uh, animate along a path. Move along the path. Oh, who knows what. All right, we'll talk to you later. Ciao.